All right, this week we're going to continue our review of polynomials uh, by reviewing how to factor polynomials. So very uh, quickly, um, let's recall what factoring is. When we factor a, a value or an expression, all right, what we're doing is uh, we're breaking it up into values that when multiplied uh, give us a, a product that is our original value. So for example, 30, 30 can be factored into 3 and 10, and 10 can be fully factored into 2 and 5. So the prime factorization of 30 would be 3, 2, and 5. And why are these factors? Because when you multiply 3, 2, and 5, they give you 30. I know it's a very, um, it sounds like an inelegant uh, uh, definition, uh, but that's what uh, that's what the definition uh, the definition of factoring is. It's the process of finding the factors of a number or an expression. A factor is a number or quantity that, when multiplied with others, produces a given number or expression. Now, I'm sure you're familiar with this um, when uh, uh, with numbers, uh, but what about expressions? Can expressions be factored? So let's take. For example, the expression 3x plus 9. Well, this can be factored into 3 and x plus 3 because when you multiply x plus 3 by 3, what do you get? 3 times x is 3x and 3 times 3 is 9. And this can be done with the expression 4x squared plus 6x. Um, they uh, uh, it can be factored into 2x and 2x plus 3 because when you multiply 2x by 2x, you get 4x squared. And when you multiply 2x by 3, you get 6x. So that's basically what factoring is, and we're going to learn how to do this with various types of expressions, uh, polynomials, I should say. All right, so um, how can you use the distributive property to factor an expression? If you recall, the distributive property basically states that if you have a times b plus c, then that equals a times b plus a times c. But this equal sign isn't just read from the left to the right. We can read this uh, equation from right to left as well. If you have an expression where you have a common factor a in two terms, a, b, and a, c, you can rewrite that as um, a times the sum of b and c. You essentially can take that factor out and, and, uh, and remove it uh, from, uh, from the expression. Uh, and um, So let's see how this, uh, this works in example one. Here we have... 4x and 10. Now if we look at uh, our numeric terms 4 and 10, you might notice that they both share a 2. So we could think of 4x as 2 times 2x and 10 as 2 times 5. When you look at it like this, it exactly matches the form of the right side of the distributive property uh, a times b plus a times c. Our common factor a in this case happens to be 2. So because 2 is being multiplied by 2x and 2 is being multiplied by 5, both 2x and 5 are multiplied by 2, so we can re uh, rewrite this as 2x and 5 both multiplied by 2. In example 2, uh, if we look at our numeric terms, 3 and uh, 12, we're going to ignore the sign here for a second, uh, 3 and 12, they both share a common factor of 3. If we look at the variables x squared and x, they both share a common factor of x, so the factor that is common to both of these terms is 3x. So we could think of 3x squared as 3x times x, and negative 12x as 3x times negative 4. And if you notice, both uh, uh, of these terms share a factor of 3x. So this is simply x times 3x and negative 4 times 3x, so we're going to rewrite that as x and negative 4 times 3x. We're essentially using the distributive property in reverse, which is uh, a way of uh, thinking about factorization. It's multiplication just backwards. You're undoing the multiplication. All right, now let's take a look at example number three, uh, 20x squared minus 12x minus 16. Now, you might be tempted to think, oh, both of these have, uh, have an x variable, so that must be a common factor, but it's actually not because... Uh, x is not common to all three terms. So in this case, we're only looking at our numeric terms, 20, 12, and 16. And sure enough, they all share a factor of 4. So we can factor that 4 out, leaving us with 5x squared minus 3x minus 4. Now let's uh, try three examples on our own. Here's example 4. Uh, why don't you try and use the uh, greatest common factor to factor this expression? Pause the video now.
All right. Uh, did you come up with a common factor of two or three or six? Because all of those factors are common. But in order to factor completely, we need to use the greatest common factor. So if you factored out a two, you factored correctly, but you didn't factor completely. If you factored out a three, uh, again, uh, you, did it, uh, you didn't do anything wrong, but you didn't completely factor the expression. There are still factors left in there. You would have had to have chosen the greatest common factor, which in this case is six. So the complete factorization is six times x plus two. Try number five on your own now. Pause the video. All right, let's see how you did. So first, let's analyze our numeric terms, 10 and 25. Well, they both share a factor of 5. And the variables, x squared and x, both share a factor of x. So factoring that out, uh, 5x uh, gives us 5x times 2x minus 5. And it's important to note that if you're wondering whether or not you factored correctly um, or completely, uh, all you need to do is perform the multiplication here, and you should end up with your original expression. So let's try that. 5x times 2x is 10x squared, and 5x my, uh, times negative 5 is negative 25x. There we go. Equivalent expressions. All right. Try example 6. Pause the video now. All right. Let's see how you did. Um... So uh, you might be tempted to factor out uh, a variable here, uh, but a ver the variable x is not common to all three terms. Uh, so we're just going to have to look at our numeric terms here. So we've got an 18, a 24, and a 12. Um, and what they all have in common is, well, they've got two in common, they've got three in common, but the greatest common factor that they have in common is a 6. So if we factor out that 6, we're left with 3x squared minus 4x. Plus two, And of course, if you perform the multiplication, uh, you end up with the original expression. Now, um, in example number seven, I've shown you uh, uh, not a special case, but something you need to be aware of. Whenever you're factoring polynomials with a leading coefficient, uh, the, very, uh, the coefficient of the first term, or the term with the highest degree, uh, is negative, uh, we always factor out that negative, because uh, negative leading coefficients become problematic uh, much later on. So if you start out with a negative 4 here, um, then, I'm sorry, if you start out with a, a negative leading coefficient, then you've got to factor out that negative. So instead of factoring the positive version of the greatest common factor, you're going to factor out the negative version of that greatest common factor. So let's take a look at our numeric terms. We've got a negative 4, uh, a 10, and an 8, and what they all share is a negative 2. And of course, x cubed, x squared, and x all share an x, so we're going to factor out a negative 2x. And that gives us negative 2x times 2x squared minus 5x minus 4. Uh, and finally, uh, this last example, I just showed you uh, this for, um, you know, if you have to deal with uh, some more complex polynomials. Um, if you... Uh, so if, if we look at our numeric terms, the greatest common factor is 3. But if you look at the um, variable uh, terms, a nice little trick for factoring out uh, the variable is um, x, you always look for the uh, smallest exponent. So if you notice in example 7, they all shared an x. They didn't all share x squared. They didn't all share x cubed. Here, um, x to the fifth power can be divided by x squared. x to the third power can be divided by x squared. x squared can be divided by x squared. So they all share a factor of x squared. The same is not true for the others. x squared can't be divided by uh, x cubed uh, evenly. Um, so uh, what we're going to factor out here is 3x squared, and this is what we get. So that's just a quick uh, review of... Um, uh, factoring using the greatest common factor. Uh, here are three practice problems that you can try on your own. Um, so let's, uh, let's try and do that now. Uh, pause the video. Okay, and you should have gotten negative 4 times 2x minus 1, 3x times 4x plus 5, and negative 3x squared plus 4x minus 2. If you notice, uh, there were no common factors here. But like I told you, whenever your leading coefficient 
uh, is uh, negative, you have to factor out that negative. In this case, since there was no greatest common factor to all of them, we're going to factor out, you can consider it uh, or think about it as factoring out negative 1. So the greatest common factor, we're actually not going to, you don't have an assignment specifically on that, but you will be factoring out greatest common factors as part of our next uh, lesson, which is um, factoring trinomials. So the following trinomial, x squared plus 9x plus 20, has no greatest common factor. Uh, the question is, can it be factored if it doesn't have a greatest common factor? Now, you should remember from class that, yes, it can be factored. x plus 5 times x plus 4 equals x squared plus 9x uh, plus 20. Uh, some trinomials can be factored, while others cannot. And there is no easy way to factor. It is always a process of searching for the right combination of values. However, there are a few patterns, relationships, and methods that you can use to make this process easier. So, um, here are two uh, polynomial or uh, two trinomials. What I'd like you to do is try and find the factorization, uh, either if you remember the method from class, uh, or even if you don't, uh, just try, try and find it on your own, and then we'll go over um, uh, the method you can use. Uh, to determine it. So pause the video and see how you do. Okay, so for the first one, you should have gotten x plus 2 times x plus 6, or vice versa, because the order of factors don't matter. And for the second one, x minus 7 and x plus 4. Now, most students get this first one, but, but they struggle with this second one. Uh, sometimes, uh, if they don't know uh, uh, the process. So we're going to go over that process right now. So to understand why um, a factoring works uh, in trinomials, uh, at least this, uh, these simple kind of trinomials, it's important to, um, to see how the trinomials are constructed from the multiplication in the, in the first place. So if you recall from class, we discovered this pattern between the values in the two binomials that produce the trinomials and the values in the trinomials themselves. All right, um, here we have uh, x plus 4 and x plus 3. This 4 and 3 can be combined to make 7, um, and when you multiply them, they make 12. All right, now that happens in this first example, and as we saw, that happens in each one of these examples. So there seems to be some relationship between these two values, uh, the constants in the binomials, all right, and the coefficient of x and the constant in the trinomial that results. All right, so... Uh, to explore this relationship, we modeled these two binomials as x plus a times x plus b. And when we do that, uh, using um, uh, the property we use to multiply polynomials, what we get is x squared plus xb plus xa plus ab. And with some fancy footwork, uh, we can use the distributive property and the commutative properties of addition and multiplication uh, to come up with the uh, the expression x squared plus the sum of a and b times x plus a b. And so what we have here is a property that we can use to easily multiply two binomials. If you have x plus a times x plus b, you're always going to end up with an x squared plus something times x, and that something is going to be the sum of a and b, all right? And then the constant is always going to be the product of a and b. And so using this property, we can very easily and quickly multiply polynomials. Um, or I should say we, should, we can multi easily multiply two binomials. So x plus 3 times x plus 4 is going to be um, x squared plus the sum of 4 and 3 uh, times x plus the product of 4 and 3. Um, so we end up with x squared plus 7x plus 12. Now to get used to this property, what I'd like you to do now is perform the multiplication very quickly. Don't, don't uh, um, d distribute the, uh, the terms in the first binomial to the second binomial. Use this property and get really, really good at instantly coming up with the product from two uh, binomials. All right, let's pause the video now. All right, let's see how you did. So here I know I'm going to start out with an x squared. The sum of negative 4 and 3 is negative 1, and the product is negative 12. So x squared and negative 1x minus 12. Here uh, the sum is uh, 2, and the product is negative 35. So that gives us x squared plus 2x minus 35. Um, the sum here is negative 4, and the product is negative 12. 
So that's x squared minus 4x minus 12. The sum here is negative 14, and the product is positive 45. So what we get is x squared minus 14x plus 45. Now, this is a lesson on factorization, not multiplication. But as I told you, factorization is kind of like multiplication in reverse. Um, rather than multiplying the two values, we're taking the product and we're splitting it up into its factors. So, uh, just like the distributive property could have been read uh, right to left, we can read this right to left as well. x squared plus x, uh, a plus b times x plus ab equals x plus a times x plus b. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use this property to break trinomials down into their factors, um, uh, the two binomials. So where would we go looking for um, a and b? Now we could look here at the sum, a and b, but you'll very quickly realize what two numbers add to make three? Well, you could do one and two, zero and three, negative one and four, negative two and five. You see where this is going, don't you? All right, there are literally an infinite pair of values that have a sum of three. So that's not going to work. But you know what? Negative 10 has a finite number of factors. So let's look at this constant value to see if we can find um, two values that add up to three. And of course, uh, two factors of te negative 10 that add up to positive three are negative two and five. All right, so now that we've identified our a and our b, we can rewrite this as x and positive 5 and x and negative 2. And of course, you can always check your work by multiplying it out. x times x is x squared. x times negative 2 is negative 2x plus 5x is 3x. And 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. So now what I'd like you to do is try numbers 2 through 5 on your own, and we'll see, uh, we'll see how you do. And we'll go through it. Okay, pause the video now. All right, let's see how you did. All right, so what two factors of 12 add up to negative 7? So there's 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. But 3 and 4 add up to positive 7. But if we made them both negative, that would give us negative 7, and two negatives multiply to make a positive. And so sure enough, two factors of positive 12 are negative 3 and negative 4, and that uh, they sum up to negative 7, and so we found our values of a and b, x and negative 4 times x and negative 3. For the next one, you should have gotten negative 5 and 6. So for um, a product of x plus 6 times x minus 5, or I should say factors of x plus 6 and x minus 5. Uh, for the next one, <clears throat> Uh, two factors of negative 21 that uh, add up to 4 are negative 3 and 7. So that gives us a factorization of x and negative 3 times x and 7. And two factors of 36 that add up to negative 13 are negative 4 and negative 9. And that gives us a factorization of x and negative 9 times x and negative 4. So this is all pretty straightforward. But... Um, not all trinomials are that straightforward. So what if you were given something like number one here? All right, can you completely factor the following trinomial? Um, by completely factor, that means you're not leaving any factors out. Now, it should be noted that the property, um, uh, the, the, the property that, that we just uh, derived uh, only applies to trinomials that start with x squared, or where the coefficient of x squared is 1, and this is not one of those trinomials. So can we even use that property on this trinomial? Um, the answer is yes, we can, because, remember the first part of this lesson, all right, the first thing you need to do in factoring is to take out your greatest common factor. And sure enough, there is a greatest common factor here, it is 5. And so when you factor out that 5, this gives you with one of these trinomials that starts with x squared, and now we can use our property to attempt to factor this trinomial. All right, two factors of negative 8 that add up to 2 are 6, and, I'm sorry, um, 4 and negative 2. All right, so that should be 5 times x and negative 2 times x and positive 4. All right, now I'll let you in on a little secret. 
Um, all of these examples uh, involve a greatest common factor, and many um, of the problems on your assignment are going to involve a greatest common factor. So I would like you to pause the video and attempt to completely factor uh, the trinomials 2 through 5. So pause the video now. All right, here we go. Uh, so for number two, the greatest common factor was two. You take that out. Uh, the two uh, factors of 12 that add up to negative seven are negative three and negative four. For the next one, you should have gotten a factorization of four times x minus 10 times x plus three. Now for numbers four and number five, uh, remember these have leading coefficients that are negative, so you've, you should have taken out a negative greatest common factor. All right, and ended up with a factorization of negative 3 times x plus 11 times x minus 2. And for number 5, negative 2 times x minus 8 times x minus 3. Okay, we're going to continue our study of factoring uh, by um, learning about factoring by grouping. So the previous method of factoring really only works when you have uh, a polynomial that starts with x squared. But what if you start? What if you have a polynomial that starts with two x squared, or basically a leading coefficient that is greater than one? How would you handle that? So to illustrate this method, uh, I'm going to show you that factoring is literally just multiplication uh, in reverse. So let's do some multiplication. Let's do two x. Um, I'm sorry, two x minus three. And we're going to multiply that by x plus 4. Now, the reason I've written this property up here uh, is because this property is uh, the property we derived a couple of lessons ago when we learned how to multiply polynomials. Um, so using this property uh, basically states that if you have a binomial a plus b uh, and you're multiplying it by c plus d, what you're really doing is just distributing the terms from the first uh, polynomial uh, to the terms in the second. Uh, so that would be equal to a times c plus d plus b times c plus d. And usually all we do is kind of like multiply it out and, and write it out. But uh, in, in this example, I'm actually going to show you, I'm going to write out this step. I'm sorry, that's not a. That's going to be 2x multiplied by x plus 4 and negative 3 times x plus 4. And now we can go ahead and distribute. Uh, we can do 2x squared, and that would give us 8x, and distributing the negative 3 would give us negative 3x and negative 12. And combining like terms, this gives us 2x squared plus 5x minus 12. So that's multiplication. Now, if factoring is just multiplication in reverse, then we should be able to reverse this process. So, let's say we started out with 2x squared plus 5x minus 12. Our next step would be to write it out as 2x squared plus 8x minus 3x minus 12. Uh, the problem is, how do we know how to split up this middle term, 5x? Uh, just like our other method, there are an infinite number of ways of splitting up this middle term. Now, I'm going to show you how to split it up, um, but uh, we really don't have time this week to go into why this works. You're just going to have to trust me. Um, I never like teaching this way, and if any of you are really, really curious, uh, I'll make another video explaining why this works, but just trust me for now. Um, to decide how to split up 5x, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at our leading coefficient, our 2, um, and our constant, negative 12, and we're going to just multiply them together. And 2 times negative 12 is negative 24. And what we're going to do is we're going to look for two factors of negative 24 that add up to 5. All right, so the factors of 24 um, are 1 and 24, uh, 2 and 12, uh, 3 and 8, and 4 and 6. Now, because we have a negative 24 here, each one of these factors could be negative. This could be negative 1 times 24 or negative 24 times 1. Either way, that's not going to add up to 5. So in order to add up to 5, it looks like we're going to have to have a negative 3 here and a positive 8. So I'm going to split this 
5x up into two terms, a positive 8x and a negative 3x. And now what I can do is I can factor by grouping uh, my terms together. So I'm going to take the first two terms, this 2x squared and this 8x, and the second two terms, this negative 3x and negative 12, and I'm going to factor it just like I would any other expression. So uh, 2 and 8 share a factor of 2, x squared and x share a factor of 2x, so I'm going to factor out a 2x, leaving me with x plus 4. Now I'm going to take a look at this expression separately. I've got a negative 3 and a negative 12. They both share a factor of negative 3. So I'm going to factor out a negative 3, and that's going to give me negative 3 times x plus 4. Now if you notice, at this point, what we have is 2x times x plus 4 and negative 3 times x plus 4. Looks a lot like this expression right here, all right? which we know is equivalent to the binomials a plus b times c plus d or a and b both multiplied by c plus d, or what's in the parentheses. So um, an equivalent way of writing this expression would be 2x minus 3, all right, both multiplied by x plus 4. And if you notice, here's the multiplication. Here's this process. That's the multiplication. All right, and this uh, factorization is literally these statements backwards. And the only part of the process that you really need to uh, think about is how you're going to split up this 5x, this middle term. And I told you, all you have to do is multiply uh, the leading coefficient and the constant and see which factors add up to this middle term, and that's how you split it up. And the factorizations should work out perfectly. So uh, let's go through some examples. Here's our next example. Let's do uh, 3x squared plus 7x plus 2. All right, so try that one on your own, and we'll see how you do. Pause the video now. All right, let's see how you do, uh, or let's see how you did. Um, so I don't know how to split up my 7x, so I'm going to multiply my 3 by my 2, and that gives us 6. So it should be pretty obvious what we're do, uh, what's going to happen here. Uh, the factors of 6 are 1 and 6, and uh, 2 and 3. Um, and the only two factors that add up to 7 are 1 and 6. So I'm going to split this up into 3x squared plus 1x, or just x. And then um, uh, I'm going to split up the, se uh, the 7x into uh, 6x and 2. Now I'm going to take these first two terms, and I'm going to factor them, and I'm going to take these second two terms. Now the greatest common factor here is just x. Uh, they don't share a 3, they just share an x. So I'm going to factor out an x here, and I'm going to leave the 3x and the 1. Here, 6x and 2 both share a 2. All right, and that'll leave us with 3x and 1. And notice, we are left with the same, um, uh, the same expression in the parentheses. So x and 2, both multiplied by 3x plus 1, can be rewritten as x and 2, both multiplied by 3x and 1. And of course, if you're unsure whether or not you did this correctly, you can always multiply this out to see if you get the original expression. x times 3x is 3x squared, x times 1 is 1x, plus 2 times 3 is 6x, that's, that'll give you your uh, 7x, and then 2 times 1 is 2. Alright, let's try another example. Let's do 8x squared plus 34x, oops, 34 x minus 30. All right, um, let's pause the video and see how you do. Pause the video now. All right, so I'm sure the first thing you did was you took this 8 
and you multiplied it by negative 30 and realized that's a big number that you don't want to factor. At which point you should have said, huh, I probably should look for a greatest common factor first because we just went through a whole set of lessons where taking out the greatest common factor was the first thing we did. So let's take out a greatest common factor. All right, so the greatest common factor here is two. Taking out that two gives us a four x squared plus 17x minus 15. Ah, so now what we want to do is we want to focus on the trinomial in the parentheses, and that's what we want to factor, all right? Because now that we've taken out that greatest common factor, all of our numbers are smaller, all right? So we're going to take this greatest common factor, and we're just going to, we're going to remember that it's out here, okay? So we've got to multiply everything by 2, and then we're going to just concentrate on factoring uh, this trinomial, all right? So the 4 and the negative 15 multiply uh, to negative 60, all right? And factoring out our negative 60, uh, we get 1 and 60, uh, 2 and 30, and then 3 and 20. And although there are more factors, all right, what we're trying to look for uh, are two factors that sum up to the coefficient of the middle term, the coefficient of x. And since 60 is negative, one of these factors has to be negative, and 20 and negative 3 all right, um, uh, have a sum of positive 17. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, split this 17x up into negative 3x and 20x. Now, at this point, because addition is commutative, it might be a little uh, strategic to make it uh, easier on yourself. Uh, you should be a little strategic on how you order your terms. I could group the negative 3x with the 4x, um, but I'm going to group the 20x. I'm sorry, with the 4x squared. I'm going to group the 20x with the 4x and the negative 3x with the negative 15x, only because it's going to be a lot easier. Uh, 4 and 20 both share a common factor of 4. Negative 3 and negative 15 a common factor of uh, negative 3. Um, so here we go. We're going to factor out each uh, expression uh, separately. Here, uh, the common factor is 4x, leaving us with um, x plus 5. And the common factor here is negative 3, leaving us with x plus 5. And now 4x and negative 3, both multiplied by x and 5, can be rewritten as 4x and negative 3, both multiplied by x plus 5. Now don't forget, right, we are factoring this trinomial, uh, and this trinomial uh, is not our original trinomial. This is half of our original trinomial because we factored out that 2. So don't forget about that 2. So our uh, complete answer uh, would be 2 times 4x minus 3 times x plus 5. And you can check this by doing the multiplication. If you just multiply these two binomials, all you'll get is 4x squared plus 17x minus 15, which isn't x squared plus 34x minus 30. All right, so you have to multiply all that by 2, and this is the right way to write it. Uh, so this trinomial doesn't have two factors. It has three factors. All right, we're going to try one more example, and then I'll leave you to work on your own. Uh, let's try negative 6 x squared plus 3x plus 30. And hopefully you've learned your lesson about what to do first. Um, so go ahead and pause the video and try this one on your own. Pause the video now. Okay. All right. So who multiplied negative 6 by 30? Eh. Incorrect. All right, let's take out that greatest common factor. And the greatest common factor here is 3, but because that leading coefficient is negative, we're going to take out a negative 3. All right, so that's going to leave us with 2x squared minus x minus 10. All right, and now we're just going to kind of remember about, you know, remember, remember that we have a, a factor of negative 3, and we're just going to factor this uh, trinomial inside the parentheses. Now, 2 times negative 10 is negative 20. All right, now the factors of 20 are 1 and 20, uh, 2 and 10, uh, 4 and 5, 
and there we go. Now, because 20 is negative, one of these factors has to be negative and has to have a sum of negative 1. All right, so that's going to be negative 5 and positive 4 have a sum of negative 1. And again, um, I'm going to be strategic about how I place these terms. Uh, I'm going to group my 4x with my 2x squared. And that'll give me n 4x. All right, and then I'm going to uh, group my negative 5x with my negative 10. Because it's just going to be easier to factor that way. And there we go. All right, so the greatest common factor here is 2x. All right, and the greatest common factor uh, here is negative 5. And what we end up with is 2x and negative 5, both multiplied by x plus 2. So that's going to be 2x and negative 5, both multiplied by x plus 2. And of course, don't forget, these are only two of the factors of this trinomial. The third one is negative 3. Uh, so our final answer, uh, or our complete factorization, would be negative 3 times 2x minus 5 times x plus 2. And there we go. Uh, you use factoring by grouping uh, when the greatest, uh, I'm sorry, when the leading coefficient is greater than 1. So here our leading coefficient was negative 6. Here our leading coefficient was 8. Here our leading coefficient was 3. And here our leading coefficient was 2. All right, if you have a um, a, uh, a trinomial that starts out with just x squared and our leading coefficient is 1, you know, let's say uh, something like this. Um, factoring by grouping will work. Uh, it, it'll work on uh, any trinomial, but it is, it's just a waste of time. You're just, you're basically going to end up doing what you do anyway uh, in more steps. All right, and there's a review of factoring in a nutshell. Let's go ahead and get started on uh, on your two assignments this week.